All right, now I have my two stars overlaid and I have them rotated. The, the top star here, this little small one, is rotated at 45 degrees. Now, I want to make this all one graphic. If I come over here to my, <clears throat> excuse me, my layers panel on the side and I have, it says, it says layer one, I'm going to rename that. We're going to call this one to uh, Starburst. So that shows the stars, you know, glowing, okay? So I'm going to do that and what I'm going to do is hit enter and double check and see what my my highlight colors yep still set it orange that's good all right now if you look here it's got a little arrow right here if you click on that arrow it shows you the sub paths which are these lines that make up the little starburst right there and if you can't see it too well here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go over to this little double these set of lines right here click on it i'm gonna come down here to panel options and now i set as a default to 20 pixels height i'm gonna go up to let's go to 50 see what that looks like all right, now I can see my panels are much bigger and my stars are bigger. Okay, now let's play around with a few things here. If I take this bottom starburst, the, the tall one, and I drag it, see how the highlight line shows up? I drag it up here. I've now placed it above the other smaller star. Remember Shrek and Donkey and, and uh, the movie Shrek, how they're talking about onions and layers and all that stuff? Well, this is exactly kind of the same thing. So now I've put those over to top each other. Now let's watch this. I'm going to come back over here and select my black arrow, which notice that is the V key. So I'll click on the V key and I've got it selected. Now I'm going to do a control A and it selects all of my objects. Now I'm going to do, use one of my favorite commands in Illustrator called Shape Builder. Notice it says Shape Builder tool, Shift M. We'll click on that and now what happens is, notice how you get this little checkerboard start popping up. Well, let's hold our Alt key down and middle mouse button and roll up on that. That's zooming in. So if I click and drag, you see a little line showing up, and drag to my right, I get that one. So now these two shapes are combined. Now notice over here in the, in the uh, layers panel to your right, you got all these shapes now. Well, that's because we're breaking them apart and merging them. So now I'm going to come back up here and grab those together. And keep watching that layers panel to my right as I keep dragging around. You'll notice here in a minute that I start having less and less layers. And that's because these graphics are now being merged together into one shape. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Wow. Now it's just one shape. Now I want to zoom out to my screen extents. I'm going to do a control zero. So it takes me to my extreme extents. So if I wanted to, I can just keep hitting control minus and zoom, zoom way out. <clears throat> and I can use control plus to zoom, zoom, zoom way in. So control minus. Uh, control plus okay now again I, I'm just showing you how to use control your control your screen back to uh, back to the screen extents control zero alright so now we got those on there so this looks pretty good this artwork here so what I'm gonna do is collapse that layer over here in layers and I'm gonna hit this space between the eyeball and hit it to lock it now if I want I can turn the layer off it's still there by turning the eyeball back on so now I'm gonna create a new layer and this layer I'm gonna call it ring R-I-N-G, okay? Now to help me out a little bit, I want to make sure I'm not, <clears throat> I've got red set. That's kind of close. I'm going to go to cyan as my highlight color, so that way I know which one I'm in. If you see over here, you got an orange and you got a red now, so that tells you where you are. Okay, that's good. So let's go back and hit our black arrow, which is the V key. Notice how I just selected over here. And I'm going to go back to my shape command. Well, instead of just dragging my mouse up here and hitting the lips, I'm just going to hit the L key. So I hit the L key and I've selected it. Now, at any given time, I start drawing a lip. See that lips appearing up there? That looks kind of cool. Well, I want it to be circular, completely circular. So I hit my Shift key and drag, drag one time, and it is circular. So now I'm going to hit my V key, and I'm going to drag this guy up over here and kind of pre-position it. That actually looks pretty good. So now that I've got that drawn, I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to click. Watch what happens here when I click on this. Okay, first of all, let me hit my F key real quick. Okay, I'm going to click on this, and that's going to highlight. Well, I'm not seeing my control panel appear up here, so I'm going to go back and reset my essentials and see if that's going to show up now. Okay, click over here, and I'm going to click on this one more time. Well, actually, the properties panel pops up right here instead of having it up here at the top. I guess because my screen is so small. Let's try one little experiment over here. Let me double do this again. Yeah, it's going to show up right here. That's all right. That's not a problem. 
So my my width on this circle is uh, or ellipse here is one and a half by one and a half. Now I'm going to link these two together by hitting my chain, and I'm going to key in one point two five. Okay, hit enter. So now my circle got smaller. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to come back over here, and now that I got my black arrow selected, I'm going to put my mouse over. Now if I'm out here, if I put my mouse over that, and I hit my Alt key. Click on this, hit my Alt key. Notice how I've got two little arrows when I hold that Alt key down appearing. If I do hold that Alt key down and drag with my selection, is that'll pop up. I'll turn my uh, alarm off here. Okay, that alarm's off. So now I have two circles. Again, they're 1.25. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the size of that one to 1.5. Again, I got my chain set, hit Tab key, boom, there it is. So now I've got these two circles here. Well, I got a problem. I want I want these two to be aligned over the top of each other. And it's kind of hard for me to figure that out. So I just kind of put it somewhere out there. Hold my shift key down and this key here. And now I and and click on hold my shift key down and then click both. And I got both selected. So if you notice here, I have my align command over here. I've got horizontal and I've got vertical center. Select vertical center and they jump back together. Now I'm gonna select horizontal center and they jump like this now I'm gonna click off here to the side I don't know where they are okay well I guess well let's go back to layers if I go back to layers and I expand that it's there but it's hidden so if I turn the top layer off there's the bottom layer turn it back on it's hidden again well it's kinda of hard to work that way let's do a control Y if I do a control Y it turns all my fill off and I see just my outlines so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag me a polygon over these two, and that'll have me select both of them. So with them both selected, I'm going to drill a hole right through the middle of those. I'm going to come over here to Object. Before I do that, let me click out here and do a Control y again. So they're both selected. You can see them selected there. But I'm going to come over here to Object, and now I'm going to do what's called a Compound Path Make. Now I see them. So now they're over the top of each other. So what would be smart at this point, I went ahead and selected them by just dragging a polygon over like that. And now what I'm going to do is do a Control G, or I go up here to Object Group. See, it says Control G. Let's just do that. So now I've got them selected, and now I'm going to move them over the top of each other. Well, they're kind of centered. We'll, we'll get them there close. Now I'll turn my watch off. And we'll get those over like that. Hey, that looks pretty cool. So now I've got them all kind of over the top of each other. So that kind of looks like my star. If I were to laser engrave this now, I would laser out this ring and I'd have all these as individual pieces. That's not good. So I'm going to unlock my layer over here, do a Control A and select them all. Go back to my Shape Builder command. And I'm going to merge them. So I'm going to merge all these. Kind of just go for my center star out like this. Get them all merged. And there I go. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm having fun with this project. So come over here and select that. Select this. Kind of going counterclockwise. You can go clockwise if you want. Now, as you can tell, whoops, I made a mistake. That's Control Z. Now I just go back and do it again. There we go. So now I've got everything selected. I'll go back to my black arrow here. And now I have a product that I'm ready to laser engrave. Well, I don't know how big it is. I'm going to select on it. And I'm going to do a Control T. And that brings up my Transform menu. Actually, it brings up my Tool menu. So I selected the wrong one. Control E. It brings up <clears throat> my Properties panel. And I know that this thing is 6 inches by uh, 6.3 inches. Well, I don't want to make it a, a standard size. So I'm just going to say 6. Boom. Well now, uh-oh, i got a problem. There was one I didn't merge. Not a problem. So I do a Control-Z. Uh, then I do a Control-A. Got them all selected. Go back to Shape Builder command. These little mistakes happen. It's no biggie. We'll fix that. Ah, that's better. Now I come back over here and select 6. And now I've got a 6-inch star. That's a product I can make. So I'm going to take this, move it over. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Control-Z again. Go back to my black arrow, which is this guy up here. Remember, select the V key. Got it selected. I'm going to come over here and do that. Remember I showed you how to copy by putting your mouse over the edge of your graphics and holding Alt key down? I'm going to do that again, and now I've got two stars. 
And now I want to transform that. I hit my E key to transform, hold my shift key down, and I'll rotate that around 45 degrees, actually 90, uh, 180 degrees. So now I'll overlay these two here. It's pretty cool. So now I click out here with my V key, deselect that. I can laser out two of those at the same time. Well, I'm making Christmas presents for everybody. So I'm going to grab this and move it over here as far as I can. Do a con I'm going to select this guy here, Control C, Control V. Hold my shift key down, rotate around 45 degrees. See if I get, yeah, there we go. Actually, working 180 degrees. So now I got one more. Control V again. I'm going to rotate this around. And, whoops, got it the wrong way. Let's go back the other way. Okay. Drag this guy over here. And now with my materials, I almost have enough room to do. Uh, four of these at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and do a control A and select that. I'm probably going to have to move this around a little bit to kind of nudge it around. Oh, I lost it. Control zero. There it is. I'll play around with this so I can get everything on. I might be able to do that. Yeah, let's see here. Yep, I can get four stars all on here at one time. Now this one's pretty close right here, so I'm going to have to just grab that one individually and move it over. So there we have everything we need. Let's do a control S to save our file. We'll give it a file name. I'm going to come down here to my uh, thumb drive. Whoops, got to find my thumb drive here. So I'll go to turn quick access off. Go right here to my, um, uh, turn that one off. And I got to put my memory stick in. Make sure he's in. There he is. So I'll do this, double click, come back over here to my superstar project. And I'm going to call this uh, Christmas star. Oops, I always use a hyphen. I don't like spaces. Star one. I use hyphens because screen readers later, when I use it on my website, they can read that better as opposed to one with spaces in it. Hit OK. So it's going to ask me to save it to Adobe CC. Well, in this case, because I'm going to laser engrave it, I need to save it to Adobe Illustrator 8 because our laser engraver only reads Adobe Illustrator 8. So select that. Hit OK. OK. So we're done for now, and now we'll copy that file off our memory stick onto the laser engraver computer. We'll come back to this later. Mm -hmm.